Welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Gear Cars. Well, behind me today, I have 2024 Hyundai Sonata in line. It is 5.49 in the morning. I have been driving for more than an hour, and that is after I fired up this car, right? So 15.1 kilometer per liter, but that's really nice MPG on this Sonata in line. But I have spotted the old new Santa Fe, finally. I knew this car was around and finally have spotted it. I've been doing it for <laughs> weeks now. I finally, finally have it. So let's go out and take a look at this car. 2024 all new Santa Fe. Not sure why I'm even doing this because you guys all know why you're here. And that is because I have right there finally the long-awaited 2024 all new santa fe days after days trying to look for one of these because i know the cars were being test driven currently and i just couldn't afford to make all those days go in vain and i finally have it if you have been following my channel it's not my first time to spot a pre-production cars and the test drivers that i have spotted so the last one was actually the kona electric i think i gotta shut you down I wanted to have the car running because because I wanted to give you a comparison look of the Santa Fe to that of 2024 Sonata N-Line I am currently test driving. Great, great car by the way. Back to you, 2024 all new Santa Fe. Let me give you the trim of this car and this car is the black ink the calligraphy model the top of the line we can see that from the black wheels black emblem and black headlamps even i'll show you up close detail in a moment among the 10 colors that i have researched on um, this seems to be creamy white pearl there is also the creamy white matte and anything that would come close to being would be cyber sage pearl but this color ain't one on the right we have genesis g70 in uyuni white on the left is hyundai santa fe in creamy white pearl well this definitely ain't a matte color right so creamy white pearl versus uni white under a same sunlight so you can see the difference a little bit toned down compared to that of the uni white however it's definitely the whitest of all in santa fe and santa fe oh, geez, just 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 look at this car my first impression on this car is hyundai has done it again I have G70 right next to it, so you can imagine how big this car is. Of course, um, G70 is not the biggest car in Genesis family, well, yet it's the tiniest one. However, the size difference, looking at it just like that. First of all, I can tell you that it's a black ink because of the blacked out emblem and also massive 20 inch wheels in black as well. And the size is also 245, 45, 21 i mean we are not surprised you know it wasn't long ago we got 16s and 17s on suvs but way past that we are now getting 21s and i think you can easily put and fit 22s and 23s on this car should you wish but of course um it's just a little bit too much but if that's what you're looking for you could certainly do it just look at that massive massive wheelhouse seems like it's using big one pot caliper but i see the floating rotors so you see it's got the ventilated disc and rotors that's another cue that's telling that it's black ink and one more thing is well this is the first car that i have spotted in real life however i've seen a lot of videos and photographies and also from the official photo the bezel around the headlamps and also what's wrapped around the h logo right here it's also finished in black a gloss black as you can see right here so that's another hint that it's saying it's a black ink edition and calligraphy model it's actually called black ink because it originates from what's called muck in korean that is a uh, one of the very old time ink that koreans have used to make the writing and that is where the name has originated from blacked out radiator grills as well and we see that pattern on 
the high-end so-called luxurious cars in Hyundai family. For example, the Palisade as well as Granger or Azera for North American market and other countries, Santa Fe also got that grill pattern. One more point is that blacked out garnish on the fender. It should say Santa Fe up close because I've seen plenty of those. Yep, and it does say that Santa Fe right here. The black cladding and blacked out side skirts and the cladding, thank God it's not plastic, but it's actually finished in high gloss. Wraps around the entire vehicle and i also really like how the tail light isn't really super bright red unlike other cars well you see over there much more toned down than one over there we see h track we see over there so that means that this car is an all-wheel drive for your information i am still going over those points that you can differentiate the car from a regular model versus a black ink I kind of already gave you the whole exterior, but you know, it's about the details when it comes to my channel and I'll give you that right now. Back to the front. So let me give you a detailed review on the front look. What do we see? So that is the HDRL, daytime running lights that has been implemented on Santa Fe. As we know, Hyundai has been doing a lot of the seamless horizon lamp. And that is, you see, Hyundai recently has been doing a lot of this seamless horizon lamp on their front look, the front bumper design, right? However, that is not the case with Santa Fe. Santa Fe has a unique design of its own, a distinctive design that just definitely stands out from the crowd and also from Hyundai family as well. Looking at that DRL alone, huge H left and right that would light up and also during the nighttime, the bar in the middle would also light up. So somewhat keeping that seamless horizon lamp. So keeping it family, but unique on its own at the same time. And another point that we see H, well, of course, right in the middle. But another one is that gigantic, gigantic H bar on the front bumper, just like that. And it really even stands out even more, this car being the white creamy white pearl color because it really didn't stand out all this much on other darker colors especially when you had the black of course but it's much more distinctive and i like it there simply is no argument that 2024 all new santa fe is a boxy car straight lines found here and there just pretty much everywhere not even a single curve on the doors it is just plain door robust masculine and very very powerful too and also look at the cladding the wheel claddings as well just almost like straight lines here so going up like that just straight lines everywhere it's just literally the straight line found on the side skirts really wish i had the access to this car and show you the light operations as well as drl so coming up close right there is the active air flat that would open up and close accordingly to maximize the mpg as well as reduce the coefficient of drag at the same time and also provide extra air to cool down the engine and other parts of the car however there are ducts right here that would make the air accessible 24 7 directly open towards the radiator that is the first thing that touches the ground when you come just too close to the side curbs when you hear something scraping like and makes a loud noise that is the first thing that scrapes and the sensor for the smart cruise control as well as highway driving assist making it six sensors all together on the front bumper the camera attached the 360 surround view to be honest we'll see much more of that wheels on santa fe than this one so i know this will be rare and unique over those five spokes but personally i do favor that five spoke wheel which i will be able to show you in a week or two santa fe never has been a boxy car but this santa fe is of course, much, much more obvious when seen in person and of course when seen from the profile. You will notice this car immediately when you see this car on the street. And that is no exception when you take a look at this car from the side uh, on a profile. That the roof line right here, well, it comes with the rail, but you see it kind of drops as it goes 
towards the rear not quickly but it still has the straight lines gigantic front window also the second window but what is different first of all we have the flag type so instead of being attached right here it's been lowered it's been attached to the body of the car on the door it takes away the blind spot created the lesser there is the blind spot it's the better no doubt so and also i really do like the design when the mirrors are attached on the doors rather than having it right behind the a pillar what i want to give you and tell you is that you see how that second row window is tucked in or should I say the rest of the B pillar and the C pillar is kind of a sticking out the lines right here. It's much more thicker, but as it passes that point right there, it gets much more thinner. The second row window is really tucked in or that portion is sticking out. That is the second row window. This portion is also a window, but it will not roll down. So the second row window is not as large as it is on the first row window. But if you combine these two together, this is much larger than the first row for sure. So keep in mind, only that portion is the portion that you would have access to rolling up and down the second row window. The top portion of this plastic piece actually gets pushed in. And that way you have the extra space here. And that is a good evidence suggesting that there will be add-ons, accessories made for the Santa Fe right here. I don't know which form and what kind of a shape it would have. Extra attachment on the sides so you can customize your Santa Fe that way and truly utilize this SUV as sports utility vehicle. I will show you all about that when I have full access to this car. Just straight lines everywhere. <laughs> Even this portion here too. Honda did not make any single effort to put curves on this car. Just straight lines here, here. Also the same design on the C pillar as well. Just look how clearly and distinctively the belt line does a good job of separating the lower and the upper portion of this vehicle. If you just take the top portion apart and just take a look at this car with the lower portion, imagine that to be the bed, looking something like that. This can already be a pickup truck on its own by deleting that portion. What do you think? That is how aggressive the exterior design of this Santa Fe is. An evidence of this car being an internal combustion engine. You don't see that with GV60 over there. You see nothing on the hood. Never thought this day would come where I point out those things. And this is the rear view of 2024 Hyundai all new Santa Fe. I am actually really surprised by one thing and it is not taillights. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? Right there. I only see one exhaust tip. I thought the black ink addition would only come in with the top of the line. That's also including the engine. You see also the G70 part right next to it. It has the dual exhaust tips. Whereas the 2.0 only had one single exhaust. H taillight in person. Again, as I have mentioned in the start of the video, I like kind of a toned down darker taillights right here. And that is the blinker. It does come in as a sequential turn signal for higher trims. So this being the calligraphy model, this model would also have the sequential lights, but of course I cannot show it to you with this car. <laughs> When you have the car in reverse, the guided lines on the floor, when you make the reverse, visually alerts the pedestrians that the car is about to reverse. And come in super close. Oh, wow. So this actually, you see this black part? When I looked at that portion from behind, I thought it was just one whole single black bar, black portion. But as I get close, you see, it's actually a whole indentation where you can stick your hand in, trunk button right there, and also the camera for the reverse cam. There are actually two more cameras here. That is for the built-in cam 2.0 that should be implemented on this Santa Fe. Just in case you didn't know, Santa Fe is actually two words. So there is a space in the middle, hence the off balance we have on the rear. But I think we would get used to that. No problem. It doesn't really bother me all that much. What about you guys? Does it bother you all that much? So you see, I have the video right in the center and that is how much it is off. 
the H track right there. But there is also plug-in hybrid for Santa Fe as well. That will not be available most likely for Korea, the domestic market, but seems like it will be for European markets. There are cars being tested with the plug-in written right here. So fingers crossed, uh, you get that car wherever you are. Lucky you guys, I really wish Korean market would get that too, but never did. And let me zoom in. And of course it does have the rear wiper just like that. It's really well hidden. It's not the longest arm, the wiper in the world. So that is the tip of the wiper here. So it would wipe off about that much. Pretty much the radius that we have here is about the size that we, it will make the circle with. So it's going to clean about that much. This is the number one reason why I try to spot these cars in real life. The rear bumper design on its own, it kind of sticks out a lot step like design right here don't think it's ever meant to be a step because it would just be too short and narrow for that to happen just look at that i'm not touching the car you see so you will never be able to set a foot on this part there is nothing busy with the santa fe when it comes to the design really really do like subtle design points like that uh, accents that they have put with Santa Fe on the rear bumper design. The tail lamp also stretches out all the way to here. There is nothing lighting up here. However, it definitely serves the purpose of being a reflector on a profile. A subtle straight line character line running across just like that. Nothing on the door whatsoever. A very faint subtle character line right here which is connected to the front fender line just like that. That is the design of this overall Santa Fe. Just straight line everywhere. The true SUV sports utility vehicle I want to say. Outrageous, outrageous trunk capacity on the third row seats. So even as a passenger, I think you would definitely have a very pleasant experience. It's slightly smaller than the second row window. You see, so it just really isn't bad. You will have great visibility and view even when you're sitting on the third row seat. I'm not even going to mention about the trunk compartment. It is going to be the largest in Hyundai family thus far because there has never been a boxy SUV, which this 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe is. I just need to drive the car to feel it, but of course it's going to have a great drive. The rear suspension, of course, it's not aired, so it's no air suspension yet. Let's go check the front. And not a surprise, the front suspension is not air suspension either. Even the wheelhouse right here, they have used the materials that would absorb the noise coming into the cabin much more effectively. It seems like that they have used the material that would further reduce and absorb the noise collected with the wheels and bumps and such. Ah, uh, and the sunrise. So this is creamy white pearl once again under sunlight. Starting to pick up the details on this car because I now have spent an hour already with the car. That is the air curtain right there. So air curtain is there. It's not blocked. It's not there for the looks, but it's actually there to serve the purpose. You see the G70 body color through it. Yes, uh, there is a reason why I actually have been holding on to the interior. You could probably sense that it's heavily tinted and I've waited the sunrise. Hopefully it wouldn't make a difference, but I do not think so. So it's just completely being reflected. So I can show you a little bit of what's inside like that. Maybe, okay, just a little bit. Okay, we see the steering wheel. The paddle shifter and also the column type shifter that's been moved up and thanks to the column shifter that is the reason why we get outrageous some space interior inside down at the center console it's the three spoke wheel it's different from the one that we have seen on Granger, where the Grangers were just straight down and was connected to the lower portion of the steering wheel but it's not and also it's kind of a carved in buttons for the hda and scc highway driving assistance smart cruise control 
right there is the four dots that we all know of and it's also in black hence the black ink edition that four dots is actually the morse code for letter h and h of hyundai and right there the phone the voice recognition system the good old thing that we know of wipers the paddle shifters frequently used buttons are actually the physical buttons so great job hyundai i see the need and reason why going all full digital with the screens but you see the setup the all those buttons radio media are all in physical buttons rather than having just gigantic screen you see the headrest over there that uh, how hyundai has made the use of that when you pull out the headrest like that the rear portion there you can use it for a hanger on the second row seat two plus two so there are two seats in the second row seat a three on the third row seat but it's been folded down it actually stretches out all the way to here so from that point back is the entire trunk that you get with the santa fe that is just outrageous hyundai will soon be showcasing santa fe so i will show you all about the interior over there and also more of a detail that i might have missed on this video so be sure to come back for that video and thanks for watching cars in korea that's it for today's video don't forget to subscribe and like cars in korea i think i need to go to sleep now <laughs> all right i'll see you in the next video bye so that is the h tail light that is used on sonata and line i forgot to mention i actually wanted to show you that back to back so that h over there versus that which h do you think suits better sonata n line or santa fe